Yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Well, here we are. We're getting closer and closer to uh, football season starting NFL and college. And, uh, of course, uh, the training camps have started in uh, both sports. So uh, it, it's about that time. Um, not to say we're not going to talk anything else, but we are definitely, definitely going to really start getting into the meat and potatoes of this uh, football. But before we get to that, talking some Justin Herbert's record-setting NFL contract, um, you know what time it is. If you haven't already and you're here on YouTube, please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell so you can be kept up to date whenever we drop any new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, go ahead, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast. We should come right up. If you enjoy the content, please give us that thumbs up, that like, whatever it is, give us that five star review. We really appreciate it. And make sure you share the show whether it's the audio or the YouTube channel. Share it with your enemies, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with whoever. People who you know love sports, people who you know don't care about sports, share it with them anyway. Because uh, you know what happens when you do that. It helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. Now, let's get right to it. All right, Justin Herbert. This is a guy who has gotten a ton of attention since he's come into the league. Really, he got attention since he was the uh, star quarterback for the Oregon Ducks. Um, not, maybe not as much attention because obviously Oregon, not a huge media market. Of course, uh, being on the West Coast and outside of LA, you're gonna get a lot less attention than you would if uh, say, you know, he was a quarterback at USC or something like that, or maybe the quarterback at Ohio State or Michigan, or of course in the SEC, right? So Justin Herbert, Everyone knew he was good, but he didn't get a ton of attention coming out of college. He gets drafted by the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, were they? Yeah, they were the Los Angeles Chargers then. And, um, you know, he's been with them three years and he's widely regarded as one of the best young quarterback prospects in the league. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? Um, we always hear them talking about uh, if you know you have the guy, pay him early because the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to get for you as a franchise. And to some extent, I get that, right? And, um, Justin Herbert, he's talented, he's mobile, he's got a huge arm, he can make all the throws by all accounts, he's a smart guy, he's a leader, and I get all that, right? But when I look at Justin Herbert, for me, there's always been something missing. And the missing is, although don't get me wrong, uh, the thing about football is it's the ultimate team game, right? And so there are so many factors that go into winning and what makes a winner. And um, obviously we know that one of the key things, I always talk about stop the run, run the ball, but uh, the kind of the general mindset in big time college football, as well as the NFL now, you gotta have the guy under center or the guy in the shotgun or whatever. You gotta have your quarterback, right? So um, I, I totally get that. Now, this is where, so they always talk about how, if you are the quarterback, you get too much credit when they win and too much blame when your team loses, right? So I look at it and I say, well, there are certain guys who deserve that. For instance, if you're a Pat Mahomes, right? Um, before he arrived with the Chiefs, the Chiefs were a good team. They were a playoff team uh, with uh, Alex Smith, former number one overall pick. Of course, um, Andy, Andy Reid, genius offensive minded head coach, right? They, this is a team that was making the playoffs quality football team. Pat Mahomes comes and he literally changes life. Since then, what, five straight AFC championship games and uh, two Super Bowl wins, three Super Bowl appearances, right? So Pat Mahomes is just a difference maker, an all-time elite guy at the quarterback position. I think it's fair to say that, despite the fact that playing quarterback today, I would say is uh, easier than it's ever been based on the rules. You can't really hit him. You can't really hit the receivers. The uh, schemes are designed so much and proliferated so much towards offense and offensive production. And we can get into that another time. It's very similar to the NBA in that they want a whole lot of offense because it's sexier, it's more exciting, blah, blah, blah. And of course, the gambling aspect. But regardless, Pat Mahomes is an all-time, all-time elite talent at the quarterback position. Quick, let me divert, uh, let me digress, excuse me. Um, as great as Pat Mahomes is, uh, I always look at it and I say, you look at Dan Marino in 1984, I think he threw for 48 touchdowns and like 5,000 yards. In 1984, when the game was not wide open, when the game is not spread out, when you could hit receivers, you could hit quarterbacks, and most teams were uh, based off of the run game, this is what he was doing. Imagine Dan Marino today. Imagine John Elway today, his mobility, his arm, his ability to throw it, his ability to read defenses, etc. There were a lot of guys from back then that if you put him in this game today, 
with the way the rules are, they would be destroying everything in sight. Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham. Randall Cunningham was Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson before Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson. Imagine Randall Cunningham today. Anyway, get off my soapbox about that. Yeah, so Patrick Mahomes, is a, he's an all-time elite guy. So uh, much love to him. And he's a difference maker. Um, Joe Burrow, this guy is a difference maker. Uh, uh, Cincinnati has been a bad team for most of its existence. Now, before Joe Burrow arrived, Cincinnati does have two Super Bowl berths in its history, and they lost both of them. But the last one was, I think I was in fifth grade, 1988, I believe. And um, they got beat by the 49ers. Boomer Sison was the uh, quarterback. Icky Woods was the running back. Really good team. Uh, Sam Weiss, I believe, was the head coach. But that was a the team they lost. And uh, between then and Joe Burrow's arrival, I don't believe Cincinnati has had a playoff win, right? Joe Burrow arrives, uh, they get to a Super Bowl, they get to two AFC Championship games, obviously win one, and literally come within about 90 seconds of winning the Super Bowl. Now, I get it, you either win or you lose, right? You either win or you lose, and uh, I'm big on that. You don't really get a whole lot of uh, participation trophies with me, but to the mere fact that Joe Burrow had these guys in position to win a championship, it says a whole lot. And so there are certain guys who I truly believe are elite and immediate difference makers. Um, so when I see other guys getting paid in ways that I don't believe is commensurate with what they've done, just because of the quote unquote being up next, I don't necessarily agree with that. Now I know a lot of people are gonna think I'm crazy. I don't think that um, uh, Justin Herbert should be the highest paid player in the history of the NFL. Like that should never happen. This is a guy who's been in the league three years. Of course, he's he's got records. He's um, uh, I think he's got the most passing yards in the first three years of a career, either the first or the second most. If it's second, it's behind Dan Marino. Um, either the first or the second most touchdown passes in the first three years of a career. He's got the rookie touchdown passes record. He broke that from uh, Baker Mayfield, although Baker only started 13 games when he set the record um, and Herbert started 15 games, but so be it. I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that Baker Mayfield is better than Justin Herbert. I'm not saying that. But anyway, point I'm trying to make is Justin Herbert has done a lot. He's done a lot. And don't get me wrong. Uh, the Chargers have dealt with some injuries. They've dealt with some boneheaded coaching. But the fact is this. Justin Herbert has not yet won a playoff game, not a single playoff game. But somehow, because he's quote unquote up next, he is, at least for the moment, the highest paid player in NFL history. This is just something I don't understand and do not agree with when it comes to the NFL uh, contracts and um, how they pay guys. If you're up next at your position, you get more. The bar keeps raising and raising. Now, I'm not saying that guys shouldn't get their value. I'm not saying that guys should not get paid commensurate with what they've done and what it appears they will do. But you haven't won a playoff game yet. Um, I get the whole premise of if you wait, the price just goes up. But Justin Herbert, he just finished his third year. So he's got two more years on his rookie deal before they even have to start paying him this big money. Realistically, all the Chargers are paying him is his signing bonus, right? So I'm I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, why is this guy the highest paid ever? Uh, he went to a playoff game last year. Now, I covered this game for the Florida Star newspaper. Shout out Florida Star. Shout out my man, Mike Jennings. Um, I covered this game for the Florida Star, the uh, wild card round, Jacksonville Jaguars and the LA Chargers. And um, I want to say it was 28 to three at halftime, uh, Chargers lead. The Chargers did not score again for the rest of that game and they lost. Now you can say, oh, the defense gave up the game. But realistically, if you are Justin Herbert and you just got paid the most money of anyone ever in history, you could not get three points or one score through the rest of that game to finish it out. That doesn't make sense to me. And so he would have had to prove a little more to me before I paid him, but that's just me. Anyway, Justin Herbert's now that guy. I guess the next thought is, um, when's Joe Burrow gonna get paid and how much is he gonna get paid? So this is gonna be real interesting to see because uh, it was reported that basically uh, Joe Burrow and his team were waiting to see what Herbert got before they went ahead and put pen to paper. So uh, we'll see. And what I wanna know from you, do you think that uh, Justin Herbert deserves to be the highest paid player in the history of the league? Do you think that he deserves the contract that he got? And uh, what do you think uh, Joe Burrow is going to get when his time comes to sign? And that's probably pretty soon here. All right. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section. Again, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll be back with you next time. And I'm out. Peace.